Welcome back to Dark Tales Uncovered, where we journey into the darkest corners of horror. Tonight, we continue the harrowing saga of zombie water. In the last episode, our survivors found themselves trapped in a city descending into chaos, the infected closing in on all sides. Now, in Chapter 3, Labyrinth of the Shadows, the stakes are even higher as Sarah and her group search for a rumoured safe haven. They stumble upon a university that holds dark secrets, and perhaps the key to understanding the outbreak. But in these twisting corridors, shadows hide more than just the past. Prepare yourself for a journey into the unknown, where every turn could lead to salvation or doom. This is episode 3 of Zombie Water, and it's going to take you places you never imagined. Stay with us, if you dare. Chapter 3 The Labyrinth of Shadows Rain pelted the windscreen as the truck sped down the winding road, the wipers barely able to keep up with the downpour. The sky above had turned an ominous shade of grey, as if reflecting the darkness that had taken a hold of the land below. Inside the truck, the atmosphere was thick with tension. Each of the survivors lost in their thoughts trying to make sense of the nightmare that had consumed their world. Sarah kept her eyes on the road, navigating through the storm with a steely determination. She knew they couldn't afford to stop, not with the infected possibly on their trail, and the poison water continuing to spread. Dr. Harris was in the passenger seat, anxiously fidgeting with the cooler that held the tainted water samples. Mr. Evans sat in the back, scanning in the map, once more, his mind working furiously to find a solution. We need to get to the university at Oakwood, Mr Evans finally said, breaking the heavy silence. They have a state-of-the-art lab there, equipped with everything we need to analyse the compound. If we're going to find a way to neutralise it, that's our best shot. Oakwood's at least two hours away, Sarah replied, her voice tight. That's without the rain and without knowing what else is out there. It's not like we have any other options. Dr. Harris nodded. Though his expression remained grim, Oakwood is a good plan, but we need to prepare ourselves. This thing, whatever it is, spreads faster than we can imagine. The river might have already reached the town, and if it has... His voice trailed off, but the implication was clear. If the river had reached Oakwood, the university might already be overrun, and if the infection reached a densely populated area like that, the situation could spiral out of control faster than they could contain it. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, Sarah said firmly. For now we just keep moving. The truck, the truck roared through the storm, the headlights cutting through the sheets of rain as they pressed on towards Oakwood. The road was long and treacherous, winding through the thick forests that loomed on either side like dark sentinels. Occasionally they would pass a small farmhouse or a roadside diner, but they were all eerily deserted, as if the entire world had been abandoned overnight. After what felt like an eternity, they reached a crossroads. A faded sign indicated Oakwood was straight ahead, while a smaller, smaller road branched off to the right, leading to a place called Mill Creek. Sarah hesitated for a moment, squinting through the rain at the sign. We stick to the main road, she decided. No detours, we don't know what's out there. As they continued straight, a flash of lightning lit up the sky, revealing a figure standing in the middle of the road just a few yards ahead. Sarah gasped and slammed on the brakes, the truck skidding on the wet pavement as it came to a stop just inches from the figure. It was a man drenched from head to toe, with wild eyes and a frantic expression. He was waving his arms, shouting something that was lost in the noise of the storm. Help! Please help me! he screamed, his voice barely audible over the pounding rain. Sarah rolled down the window, letting the rain and the man's desperate pleas into the truck. What happened? she shouted back. The water! It's poisoned! Everyone's gone mad! They're killing each other! The man cried, his voice shaking with fear. Please! You have to help me! They're coming! Dr. Harris exchanged a grim look with Mr. Evans. It was clear that the infection had spread faster than they feared. Sarah hesitated, glancing at the others. 
We can't just leave him here, she said, though doubt lingered in her voice. Mr Evans opened the door and helped the man into the back seat, where he collapsed, shivering and mumbling incoherently. As soon as the door was shut, Sarah floored the accelerator again, speeding down the road towards Oakwood. We're heading up to the ver university, Dr Harris told the man, trying to keep his voice as calm as possible. We think we can stop this, but we need to know. What else did you see? The man's eyes were wide with terror, his breathing shallow and ragged. It was the river. Everyone drank from it. They thought it was safe, but then they started to change. My wife, my neighbours, they weren't themselves anymore. They tried to... to... He broke off, choking on his own words, unable to continue. Mr Evans placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder. You're safe with us now, he said, though he wasn't quite sure he believed it himself. As they approached the outskirts of Oakwood, the storm forgot, finally began to let up, the rain easing into a light drizzle. But then, but the change in the weather did nothing to lift the oppressive atmosphere that hung in, over the town. The streets were deserted, much like Greenridge, with no sign of life anywhere. The once vibrant college town was now a ghost town. Sarah navigated the truck through the empty streets, heading towards the university campus. As they drove, they drove, they passed abandoned cars, their doors hanging open as if occupants had fled in a hurry. Storefronts were smashed and debris littered the sidewalks. It was as if the town had been hit by a hurricane, but there was no sign of the storm's typical devastation just the eerie quiet of a place that had abruptly been and abruptly and vitally emptied for of life. Finally, they reached the university. The campus was sprawling with ivy-covered buildings and manicured lawns, but now it was desolate. The only sound, the dripping of the rainwater from the eaves. Sarah parked the truck near the science building and they all got out, moving cautiously towards the entrance. The man they picked up was still shaking, but he followed close behind, his eyes darting nervously in every direction. This place feels wrong, he muttered, like something terrible happened here. Dr Harris led the way inside, his heart pounding in his chest. The halls were dark, the power out, but they brought flashlights and the beams cut through the darkness, revealing the pristine but eerie emptiness of the building. We need to get to the lab, Dr. Harris said, trying to keep his voice steady. If we can analyse the compound, we might be able to find a way to neutralise it. They made their way through the labyrinth of corridors, the sound of their footsteps echoing ominously off the walls. Every creak of the building, every distant noise made them jump. Their nerves stretched to the breaking point, but they pressed on, driven by the hope they could stop the nightmare from spreading any further. When they reached the lab, Dr. Harris let out a sigh of relief. The lab was intact, untouched by the chaos outside. He quickly set to work, placing the cooler on the counter and carefully preparing the samples. Mr. Evans and Sarah stood guard at the door, while the man they'd rescued paced nervously, his anxiety mounting with each passing second. As Dr. Harris began analysing the compound, his brow furrowed in concentration. The others couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. The darkness of the building seemed to press in on them, suffocating in its silence. Suddenly, there was a loud crash from somewhere deeper in the building. Everyone froze, their eyes wide with fear. The sound was followed by a low guttural growl, the unmistakable noise of one of those infected. They're here, the voice, the man whispered, his voice trembling with terror. Sarah's grip tightened on the crowbar she'd picked up earlier. We need to get out of here now. Dr. Harris shook his head, his eyes still focused on the microscope. Microscope. I'm close. I think I've found something. Just give me a little more time. But the luxury, but time was a luxury they did not have. The growling grew louder, joined by the sound of shuffling and feet and laboured breathing. Whatever had been hunted them had found them, had found their trail. We have to go, Mr Evans urged, grabbing Dr Harris's arms. Reluctantly, Dr Harris backed away from his work, but not before grabbing the notes he had made. 
They raced out of the lab and then into the hallway, their flashlights flickering in the darkness. The infected were closing in, the grotesque forms emerging from the shadows. These were students, faculty, people who had once walked these halls with purpose, but now they were nothing more than mindless, enraged shells, their eyes filled with a terrifying emptiness. The group ran, their footsteps pounding on the tiled floor as the infective gave chase. They barreled through the dark corridors, taking turns at random, desperate to lose their pursuers. The sounds of the infected echoed through the building, growing closer with each passing moment. At last, they burst out of the science building and into the rain-soaked night, the infected close behind. Sarah didn't hesitate. She bolted for the truck, shouting at the others to follow. They piled into the truck, just as the first of the infected reached them, slamming onto the vehicle with frenzied force. Sarah floored the accelerator, the tyres spinning on the wet pavement, before finally finding traction and shooting forward, leaving the infected in the rearview mirror. As they sped away from campus, hearts pounding, Dr. Harris clutched the notes in his hand, his face pale and drawn. I found something, 